All right, well, we're glad you're here this morning. It's been a fun week. It was a birthday week for me. Thank you for all the birthday wishes. Uh, it was a really good time. Okay, we're going to go to the Word together this morning. You know, we've got to recruit some people for this side of here. Let's, okay, and let's just think for a minute about our, <laughs> let's think about our church-wide accomplishments. Uh, this year, we uh, we had one family that wanted to pay for the utility building, and so we are very thankful and excited about that. And it's coming in next week. Yes, and it took many families uh, to do the parking lot. Parking lots are so so expensive. And I wanted to tell you one more thing. For Easter, um, we had a first time first time um, first time guests at Easter. And she told me before they left, it was a family. She said, I just want you to know something. She said, this is the friendliest church I have ever been to. She said, young and old, people greeted me, every age. And she said, I just wanted you to know that. She said, because we we visited a lot of churches and it hasn't been that way. So, good for you. Good for you. All right, let's go to the Father in prayer. Dear Lord, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this coming together. Lord, we know that it is a holy thing. You said to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. Father God, I thank you. There's things for us to receive from one another. There's things for us to receive from you. There's things for us to give as we're here together. And Father, I thank you that you give us the wisdom to to receive. You give us the wisdom to sow and to give. And Father, I thank you that we're changed in your presence. We're changed in your word. Lord, that your will would be done. Thank you for revelation knowledge today. As we go into your word, I thank you we see what we haven't seen. We see it in new ways, in new light, to go forward, to grow in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today we're going to talk about uh, prayer. You know, a very important aspect to the will of God being done in our lives is prayer. We want to know the will of God. We want to find the will of God. The will of God is knowable. It is findable. Some people think that uh, you uh, can't know it, that it's evasive. But in fact, we can know the will of God. And one aspect of that we're going to find in prayer. So we're going to start in Luke 18. Luke 18, verse 1. Now he was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not become discouraged. So we're going to read this parable this morning that Jesus shared with his followers, with those gathered around him. The purpose of this parable is to show that at all times we ought to pray and not become discouraged. So if we ought to pray, it's something that we owe. Owe is how we get the word ought. We ought to pray. We ought to pray, it says, at all times. So there's nothing that is outside of the realm of prayer. At all times we ought to pray and not become discouraged. Uh, We shouldn't become discouraged because we should expect things to change from prayer. I think too many people are afraid if we ask something of God, that he might not do it, and then we'll be disappointed, or we won't understand, and so it's just easier to not even ask him. But in fact, it's his will. We ought to pray about everything and not become discouraged. So here's the parable. In a certain city, there was a judge who did not fear God, did not respect any person, So in this certain city, there is a judge who does not have fear of God. He does not have fear of man. He has no incentive to do anything that he doesn't want to do. He he is only moved by his own whims. And now there was a lady in that city, and she kept, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know why I said lady. There's a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him. She kept coming to him, saying, Give me justice against my opponent. And for a while, he was unwilling. 
So we have this widow, and she's seemingly, in this culture, to be a widow was about as far down as you could be, probably other than being a child. So she did not have uh, influence. She did not have uh, possessions. She did not have um, anything that would in, uh, encourage this judge to move on her part. So she kept coming to she kept coming to the judge, saying, "Give me justice against my opponent." And for a while, he was unwilling. For a while, he was unwilling. But later, he said to himself, "Even though I do not fear God, nor respect any person, yet because this widow is bothering me, I will give her justice." Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge said. Now, will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry out to him day and night? And will he delay long for them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Okay, so we have this widow that comes to this judge, and she, she's asking, and he has no, he's not interested, he doesn't care. And he turns her away without her requests being made. So, so she has no connections, she has no influence, she is totally dependent on this unwilling person. Her fate is in his hands. And Jesus said that, that she kept coming to him and said for a while he was unwilling. For a while. So for a while it looked hopeless. For a while it didn't look like the situation was going to change. For a while there was no movement, no hope of movement. But because she kept coming, because she continued he said to himself, even though I don't fear God, he said, like, I still don't care what God thinks about this. I still don't care that I have to stand before him. I don't care what other people think about this situation. Yet, because this widow is bothering me, I will give her justice. Not because it was owed her, not because he cared about justice, but because she didn't quit. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. And the Lord said, listen to what the unrighteous judge said. Hear what the unrighteous judge said. Now, the unrighteous judge is very different from our Father God. He said, now the Father God will bring about justice for his elect who cry out to him day and night. And will he delay long? Will it take long? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? So tied to this idea of justice being brought about, tied to this idea of our, our request being answered, is will he find faith on the earth? Will he find faith on the earth? See, this, uh, this widow came repeatedly because she knew he had the ability. The judge had the ability to change the situation. She came rep repeatedly because she knew he was able. So she had some faith in him. She knew that he was her hope. She knew that he was her faith. So when we go to God, we have to come to him knowing he's our hope. He's our faith. He has the ability. He can do this and he will do this. And she wouldn't have kept coming if she didn't think it was a possibility. When we come to God, we must come in faith. So God's actions, according to this parable, are connected to our asking. God's actions. There is a, uh, an idea in the world that, well, God does whatever he wants to do. You know, everything is God's will. Everything is not God's will. Everything that happens on earth is not the will of God. Uh, but in fact, according to Scripture, what God does is connected to what we do. God's actions are connected to our asking. Let's look at verse 7 again. Will he not bring about justice? 
for his elect who do what? Who cry out to him. He's not going to just bring about justice. That's not how he set up this earth. He set us up here to ask him. All right, so will he find faith? Will he find faith on the earth? Jesus said, my one concern is that in this is that, that when, when I return, will I find faith on the earth? Will I find anybody asking? Will I find anybody uh, imploring of me, crying out to me day and night? So I would ask you this morning, what are you asking for? What are you asking for? Are you in faith? Are you in faith? If Jesus comes back tomorrow, will he say, well, yes, I did. I found faith in Taylor, South Carolina. I found it in Spartanburg. I found it in Greenville. I found faith all over South Carolina. So one way that you can tell if you're in faith or not is what are you excited about? What are you excited about? You should be excited about some things that you have implored of God, that you've asked of him, that you put some expectation on because you know he's able. He's willing. He wants me to do this. He's told me to do this. So what are you excited about? So remember the purpose of this parable. Jesus said it's to show that at all times we ought to pray. There's not a situation we shouldn't take before him. At all times we ought to pray and not become discouraged. Jesus said, don't become discouraged. Why would he tell us that? We would be tempted to become discouraged. We would be tempted to say, oh, you know, that's probably not going to work. You know, we don't really know what God's will is. We don't really know what we want him, what he's going to do and what he's not going to do. James 5.16 so at all times we ought to pray and not, not become discouraged. Be encouraged. He will bring about justice. James 5.16. A prayer of a righteous person, when it's brought about, the footnote there says accomplished by God, can accomplish much. The prayer of a righteous person, we're looking at the bottom part of this, the effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. The ESV says the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Our prayers are working. Great power means we have a power available to us beyond our ability, beyond our influence, beyond our education, beyond our strength, our inventiveness, our problem-solving skills. There is a power available to us. The prayer of a righteous person has great power at its working. The Amplified, and some of these update, there's different, trend, different versions of the NASB up there and then the Amplified as well. Uh, I'm reading from the Amplified Classic. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Or that could be translated dynamic in its working. Tremendous power, like dynamite power, dynamic in its working. The earnest prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Dynamic in its working. All right, so there is a power available in prayer. Jesus said you ought to pray about everything and don't get discouraged. Some translations say don't give up, don't quit. James said the prayer of a righteous man avails much, can accomplish much. So some examples in the Bible of answered prayer. Joshua prayed and the sun stood still. Jonah went and and prophesied to Nineveh. God had put a death sentence on the whole city of Nineveh. And they repented, prayed, cried out to God, 
and he reversed the death sentence upon them. They were an ungodly people. And they prayed unto God, and their death sentence, they were unpleasing. They were living unpleasing to God. And they repented of their ways. You know, uh, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. What kind of man have we been talking about praise? The prayers of a righteous man. A righteous man, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us, cleanse us, not cover us, cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Sin is what uh, is unrighteous. So as we confess our sins, we're restored to righteousness. And then we become that righteous man, that righteous woman who makes dynamic power available in our prayer. All right, so Nineveh, they did this. And the death sentence was reversed on them. Hezekiah was similar. Uh, The prophet came in and said, Hezekiah, you're going to die. He was sick, and he said, yeah, yeah, you are sick, and you're going to die. And Hezekiah cried out to God, and God added 15 years to his life because of his prayer. Samson prayed. Samson did a lot wrong. But he prayed, and God restored his lost power. Daniel prayed, and God shut the lion's mouth. Elisha, Paul, and Peter prayed, and dead people came to life. Elisha, Paul, and Peter, their prayers brought people from death to life. Elijah prayed, and there was no rain for three and a half years because of his prayer. He prayed again, and rain came. And in the book of James, James tells us that uh, Elijah didn't have special prayer privileges. Some might say he knew that we would probably say, well, he was Elisha. He was a prophet of God. Of course God did what he said. But James said, nope, he was a man just like us. His prayers have the same potential that your prayers have. He was no different. 1 John 3.22 says, Whatever we ask, we receive from him. Whatever we ask, we receive from him. That is quite a challenge. That's quite a high bar. Whatever we ask, we receive from him. Our prayers should be connected to expectation. The widow, she knew the judge could. And she came with expectation. She said, I'm not going to quit till I get what I want. I'm not going to quit till I get what I need. And she got what she wanted. But some people uh, have unanswered prayer. We all have prayers that we've prayed, right? And and, and we can't explain it. And we can't become discouraged in our praying. Today we're going to talk about uh, six keys to answered prayer. Six keys to answered prayer. We're going to look at what the word, what conditions the word puts on answered prayer. So whenever our reality and our truth conflict, we don't have to just accept our reality. One thing that we need to settle for sure is that God's word is truth. Truth is unmovable unchangeable, everlasting. And there's many things that we accept as truth that are not truth. In this list of answered prayers, of all of the things that we saw, these things were changeable. You might think the sun standing still is unchangeable, but according to the word of God, that's changeable. According to the word, a death sentence is changeable. Uh, you're going to get sick, you get a report from the doctor, you're going to get sick and die, there's no hope, there's nothing we can do for you. According to the word, that's changeable. That's not truth. That's, that's changeable. A loss of power. Hungry lions. Dead people. Rain, no rain. According to the word of God, these things are changeable. 
God's word is not changeable. So whenever, you know, how people say today, well, my truth, there's no such thing unless your truth is God's truth. So we don't want to use that loosely because we're confusing ourselves on what truth is. I don't have a different truth from God's truth. There's only one truth. Truth is not changeable. It's everlasting, immovable. God's truth. So let's not accept anything that's tr as truth that's not truth. Everything else is changeable. Amen. Okay, so six, six keys to answer prayer. All right, so the first key, I don't know how far we're going to get today. The first key to answered prayer, we're going to look at Mark eleven twenty four. It says, therefore, I say to you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. The NASB says, therefore, I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them and it will be granted to you. The first key to answered prayer is that you have to desire something. You, it's connected to your desires. You have to want something bad enough to ask for it. Have you ever, uh, you know, like maybe been in a restaurant and you like wanted, I don't know, ketchup? Did you want it bad enough to ask for it? Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't, right? So you've got to want it bad enough to ask for it. It has to be a desire. Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. It's not a wish. It's not a hope. That's not a desire that you're asking for. You know, I kind of wish it would go this way. That's not. There's no guarantees on that. So uh, if we don't have a strong desire, we won't engage our faith. So to engage our faith, we've, to, we've got to want it enough to ask for it. Psalms 37, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will do it. All right, so key number one. You've got to desire it enough to ask for it. So ask yourself, Am I really desiring this? Is this something I'm really committing to the Lord in prayer? Is this something I'm going to put my faith out on and stick with and see it through? We don't need to be careless with our prayers. And we don't need to be careless with our hooking up with other people. We need to be serious about our prayer life if we want God to be serious about us. So we need, we need that expectation. It'll hurt your faith if you're careless with it. It'll hurt your faith because, you know, you won't see much happening and you'll think, well, this isn't doing a lot of good anyway. Okay. Our second key to answered prayer is obedience. Obedience. 1 John 3, 22. And whatever we ask, we receive from him. But it doesn't stop there. Whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and because we do the things that are pleasing in his sight. So we can live in such a way that whatever we ask, we receive from him. If we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight, Verse 23, this is his commandment that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. All right, so the second key to answered prayer is obedience. It's tied to our obedience. We're keepers of the commandment. And we're doers of the things that please him. And then uh, it, the Holy Spirit makes it so clear for us and says, well, this is the commandments, that we believe in his name, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. So that's our first part. The first part of our commandment is to believe in the name, to believe in the name. God gave him a name that is above every name. 
God gave Jesus a name above every name. The word says at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow on the earth and above the earth and under the earth. The word says we're baptized in the name of Jesus. I love that Graham said the thing he was most proud of this year was that he got baptized. We're baptized in the name of Jesus. This is not just a religious title. In Acts, it says that men risk their lives for that name. Peter, uh, when he saw the man at the gate, beautiful, he said, silver and gold I don't have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. The early disciples were beaten and told, don't teach in that name anymore. We don't like what you're doing in that name. You are getting this huge following because of that name. So the the first commandment is that we believe in the name of his son. We have to understand the power behind that name. He's been given a name. So when you go to God and you go in the name of Jesus, you're going in the name that that's a name above every name. That's the name that every knee bows and every tongue confess. That's the name that commands untruths to line up with the truth. So when we go to God in prayer and we go in the name of Jesus, we're going in the power of that name. That tremendous power being made available. Prayer is a powerful thing. It avails much. All right, and then the second part of the commandment is to love one another just as he commanded us. Love one another. Faith works by love. They're not, you can't disconnect them. Faith works by love. So whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments. We're keepers of the commandments, and we do the things that are pleasing in his sight. We do the things that are pleasing in his sight. That means every day, I'm not seeking to please myself. I'm going to quit pleasing myself. I'm not going to please anyone else. I'm not trying to please anybody else. Lord, what would please you? Lord, how would you ha- have me handle this situation? It's, it's a, a walking with him. And as we go through these keys, and I know we're not going to get done today. As we go through them, you're going to see that they overlap. Everything just keeps winding, uh, in, winding in and out between each other. So, so our part, our part, when we come to him and ask, is to believe in the name, to love one another, to do what's pleasing in his sight. His part is to give us whatever we ask for. That's a pretty good deal. To give us whatever we ask for. 1 John three twenty four. The one who keeps his commandments remains in him. The one who keeps his commandments remains in him. Another way to say it, lives in him. And that's leading us to our next key. The one who keeps his commandments remains in him. There's something about this connection of being in him and he being in us that is the key to answered prayer. And we were made for this. We're not trying to get God to do something here. We were created for this. This was the parameters he gave us. This is what he created us for. This is how it works. And this is how he wants us to be. And then Jesus said, you ought to pray. And don't give up. Don't get discouraged. 324, the one who keeps his commandments remains in him. And he in him. When I keep his commandments, he remains in me, and I remain in him. We know this, that he remains in us by the spirit whom he has given us. So as we keep his commandments, we keep his word, as we're concerned about, God, what do you want me to do here? God, what does walking in love in this situation look like here? Uh, 
You know, every situation in life, we should be turning to him because we don't know exactly. There's no, we can't walk this walk apart from him. We can't get a list of rules to follow. We can't just follow a list of rules apart from him. We can't say, just tell me what to do and I'm gone, I've got it. This is something that we walk with him day in and day out. Decision in and decision out. Every, everything that comes up, we take it to him. We're remaining in him. We're living in him. And as we do that, developing our relationship with the Holy Spirit whom he's put in, inside us. The Holy Spirit that walks with us. The one who is the helper and the counselor. When you need good counsel, guess what? You have the perfect, the highest, the best counselor on the inside of you. The advocate, the one who's on your side, the one who's pulling for you. The, uh, what else? The teacher. The teacher. These are all the, the names of the Holy Spirit. The guide. When you need help, when you're in school or you're on a thing, at your job, and there's something that you don't know how to do, uh, you know, you turn to the teacher because he knows. He's like, I can show you how to do that. When you've got a, a people problem and you're trying to deal with this, if you manage people and you're dealing with a situation, the Holy Spirit, he's like, yeah, I know how to help you through that. So as we remain in him, as we keep his commandments, he's in us and we're in him. And we know this, that he remains in us by the spirit he has given us. The Holy Spirit in us, guiding us and directing us. So our second key, we're going to stop with the second key today. Uh, the second key to answered prayer is obedience. Do you know some people don't want to obey? Let's look at a couple examples real quick. Job 21. Are you going to have it up there? Job 21. Yes. Verse 14 and 15. They say to God, depart from us. We don't even desire the knowledge of your ways. Go ahead to 15. Who is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what would we gain if we entreat him? Did you know there are people that say, who is the Almighty? We don't, we're not interested in knowledge of you. We don't care about your ways. Hosea 4, 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. You have rejected knowledge. So there's some people who don't even want to obey God. And then God goes on to say there, I will also reject you. If you reject me, I will also reject you. As we obey God, as we walk in obedience to him, uh, you know, so to, in order to obey, you see what you need to do next, right? You know what you need to do next. And so as you take that step, you get more light. So obedience is the path to more light. So you don't know 10 steps down the road. You just know the next step. And as you take the next step, you get light for the next step. And then light for the next step. So obedience is the path to more light. As we obey, we get more light. Amen. All right. So we're talking about keys to answered prayer. It's intended that whatever we ask, we receive from him. That's God's intention. But there's some keys that we need to know in order to be there. We can't just ask for any crazy thing. We need to be in him and him be in us. And he will do some crazy things. He will do some crazy things for you. But you're going to be led by him. Amen? All right. So Jesus said, he was telling them a parable. So to show them that at all times they ought to pray and not become encouraged. So be encouraged. Prayer is an important key to the will of God being done in your life. 
Prayer is an important key to the will of God being done in the lives around you. It makes dynamic power available. Amen? You guys are quiet. All right, let's stand to our feet. And let's go before the Lord. Let's go before him that has that name that is above every name. Father, we worship you and we praise you. You know, this is a time he can speak. He can give you light right now for the next step. He can show you something you've been hung up, and you're like, Lord, I'm just met a brick wall here over this situation. He can give you light right now. Father, we love you and praise you. You are so good. We thank you for your heart. We thank you for your provision for us. Thank you, Father God. You didn't just save us so that we can make heaven our home. But, Father, you gave us everything we need for life and godliness. Father God, I thank you that you created us in such a way, Father, that you made the provision for every day of every year of our life. I thank you, Father God, that you've provided so richly for us. Father God, I thank you that that you've given us this relationship with you. You said, whatsoever we ask, you give us. Father God, I thank you. Lord, we're just getting started on this, but I thank you, Father, that, 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 that we've sowed enough of the word this morning into our hearts that we stir up this desire to develop our our prayer life with you. There is none above you and none beside you. Lord, I thank you. You said you would give us the desires of our heart. And Father God, some of those desires have laid dormant. And you want to stir up those desires that you've placed in us. You want to stir those desires for your purpose, for your glory, for the very purpose that you created us. Lord, we allow you to stir up those desires. That, Father God, that we would ask you, that we would ask you, that we would engage with you, that, Father God, that we would stir up our faith, knowing knowing that you're able, knowing that that you are the just judge, knowing that you are the righteous Father. Lord, that you would stir those things on our heart. Lord, I thank you that every single person here, Lord, that they have things that, that you want them to bring about in prayer that no one else can. You have things in this life that their life touches, that they can bring about the change that no one else can. I thank you, Father God, for, for making that real this morning, for making that real. I thank you, Father God. I thank you for new prayer desires. I thank you for new prayer desires. I thank you, Father God, that we're walking from glory to glory. And Father, I thank you to stir up remembrance of things that you've done in our past. Stir up those times when we've seen you be faithful. Stir up, Father God, those times when we've known no one else could have done that but you. And Father God, that we would stir up our faith. That we would stir up our faith, Lord. And Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bring our requests before you in the name that's above every name. Lord, we thank you that you are truth. You are life. Your truth is eternal. Your truth is the truth. It is eternal. It is everlasting. We thank you, Father God, that everything except your word is changeable. It's movable. It's reversible. It's retractable except for your word. And Father God, we, uh, uh, we confess our sins, Lord. Lord, when we've accepted things and put the name of truth on them, when in fact they were not truth. And Father God, I thank you to quicken our hearts to recognize truth. 
to recognize truth, we'll say, ah, yes, that's truth. Well, no, that can't be truth. That, Lord, we'll, we'll be able to differentiate. And, Father God, that we'll bring the situations and the circumstances in our lives to line up, to move, Father God, in line with your truth, to move in line with your word. Father God, that our lives that our lives would line up with you, that we would do those things that are pleasing in your sight, that, Father God, we would be those righteous men and women with effectual prayer that avails much, dynamic in its working, powerful, nothing we can do, nothing we have, but we serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you're working in our situations. You're working in our families. Is there anyone here this morning, if you need prayer, you can stay in your seat and just raise your hand, and we're going to join with you together in faith. If you have a situation that you want your church family, you know, the word says that where we agree is touching anything. It'll be done. There's, There's a prayer of agreement, of coming into agreement, and we join our faith. Is there anyone here this morning? Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We magnify you. We worship you. Well, let's just sing to him and worship before we leave. No, I could never get tired. Telling you you're worthy There's so many ways I Could sing of your glory Though I could never get tired Of telling you you're worthy Over and over again Over and over again He's worthy. You are worthy. You are. Oh, Father God, sometimes we live such a small life. We're so small-minded. Oh, but Father, when we set our eyes on you, Lord, I thank you. You just lift the lid off of our lives. You lift the lid off of our ability. You lift the lid, Father God, off of our situations. We worship you. We thank you. You're the lid lifter. No limits in you. We worship you. Thank you for every person that's here, Father God. I thank you, Father, that you are stirring up a heart of prayer. Stirring up a heart of prayer in each of us, Lord. And Lord, we're going to start bringing in our testimonies and encouraging one another. We see you work and see you move like you want to. Like you want to. You're like, just ask me. Let let me work. Let me work in that situation. Just ask me. Lord, we we won't limit you. But we'll involve you, Lord. We'll call on you. And thank you, Father God. You're well able. You're willing And we thank you, Father. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.